I wow, know that. there's a lot of people. people. You're pretty popular. Thanks, man. I will say that when I told my friend Aaron that I was uh, moderating a panel, he was like, what? What time is that? I'll be there. Can I have a pass? Yeah, I got, I got him one. He's here. You're a nice friend. I tried. You're a nice guy. I love your dress. Did you see this girl in the, in the shindy dress? It's kind of amazing. <laughs> So when I was, uh, you know, just doing some extra research, and like I'd like to do on everybody that do, I, I found out that you were, on, you were on Are You Afraid of the Dark? Like, yeah. and that was like, that, I, that must mean that I've seen you before I had seen you. <laughs> because I used to watch Are You Afraid of the Dark all the time. It's kind of a lame show, but I used to watch it. There's um, nothing lame about it. We all watched those shows when we were kids, right? What was that experience like? I mean, it was kind of an interesting show, I found. You know, it was, it was very structured. It shot in Montreal. Um, I love Montreal. You guys been to Montreal? It's amazing. Um, you know, I was a kid. I was. I think the first one I did, I was maybe ten. And the second one I did, I was thirteen. So when you're that young, it's not really a job. You just eat a lot of candy at craft service, and you know, it's just do what you want. Um, and I got to stay up late because it was all night shoots, and I thought that was the coolest. My mom let me have a coffee, and I was like, so stoked about that. You'd done a guest shot on uh, Xbox, what was yeah. that? Yeah. Um, I was 13, and I remember I had just gotten off uh, shooting a, a show in Montreal again called Space Cases. A lot of candy. A lot of candy. A lot of candy. I was really tired, and I just wanted to see my friends, and you know, I was 13. And, um, yeah, the X-Files called my agent and was like, I don't think you want to turn this one down. I think, I think this will be good for you. So um, there I was in a river, freezing cold in October in Canada with David Duchovny in a suit. It was very weird. <laughs> very weird. And then he was giving me mouth to mouth. And I was like, ew, gross, ew. Oh, man, the California Cajun guy. Yeah. Uh, he was very well, he nice. He wasn't though. that yet. He wasn't that yet. No, he wasn't. He was very sweet. She was very sweet as well. Uh, and I, I mean, I just thought, again, you know, I, I always search for things that I think are interest, points of interest for geeky people like myself. So I, you did voices on, uh, on Mummies Alive. What, did you do like, a character? Like, I was like, I used to watch that show too. <laughs> I've done all kinds of weird stuff, guys. I, I can't keep track of it all. The voice stuff is super easy because you get to show up to work wearing whatever you want to wear. Um, sweatpants, preferably. It's super, super casual. And you do three or four episodes, you knock them all off within a couple hours, and you go home. So it's it's really easy. It's kind of a nice gig. You did it, you barely remembered. Oh yeah, Mommy's Alive. I, there's lots of things where I'm like, oh yeah, that. I did that thing. Um, so I was checking out your food blog, and, I, and it's funny, me and my, my family, we just switched over to, uh, well, we're trying to be vegan-ish. Oh my god. Yeah, it's really hard. We're, we're not so being vegan about it. It's way too difficult. You know, vegetarian fish, I don't know. So I was like wow. looking at your stuff, trying to find, but you seem to be eating lots of meat. I do eat lots yeah. of meat. I do. I do. I mean, I have nothing against vegetarians or vegans or anything like that. And I, I love to eat anything and everything. I'm kind of one of those people. Um, and, you know, if I go to your house and you're a vegan and you make me a delicious vegan meal, I'm going to love it and eat it, you know? Um, but for the most part, I just, I was raised that way. I eat a, I eat a, lot, of, a lot of meat, a lot of cheeseburgers. It's my favorite food ever in life, ever. Um, so, yeah, and I actually, speaking of food... Wait, where is your favorite burger place? I'm just curious. Oh, oh, in, like, the world? Yeah, because I'm a burger guy as well. Ah, uh, man. Okay. My... Okay, no. Uh, 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 uh. There's this place in Paris. Mine's not that interesting. <laughs> Wait, I say that because I just, from my house, I just got back from Paris. I, I did a convention in London. Um, it's, a, it's a convention called uh, Star Fury. And if you guys never heard of it, they're they're fabulous. They're they're almost it's just like a really small intimate party, really, all weekend long. And it was it got quite wild. Was, all kinds of strange things happened, but that's a totally different story. Um, but uh, since I was in London, Paris is you know a quick jaunt away. 
So I hopped a flight there and went to eat what was apparently the best burger in Paris at this restaurant called Chez Ferdi, and it was the best burger I've ever had. It was just like oozing with cheese. The cheese had melted all over the plate by the time the burger had got there, you know what I mean? Oh my god. It was so, it was so absurdly good. So that's one of the best. Was that when the food block started? You were like, I gotta write about this. No, this was, this, I, I, I mean, I don't even know how it started. My friend Martin Hero, who was um, an executive producer on Stargate Atlantis, and he was also the creator and showrunner of the LA Complex, which is another show I did. Um, he's going to be here today. He's flying out from LA. We're going to a concert tonight. We're going to the National. Ooh. I don't even know what they are. But apparently, <laughs> apparently they're super cool guys. Um, <laughs> I know the whole soundtrack of Lee Miz, but that's not cool. Apparently. Actually, when he, when he told me he got his tickets to the National, he's like, look them up on iTunes and buy the album. Sorry, side story. I do this a lot, by the way. And uh, I, I looked them up and I found, you know, Peter Mansbridge on the National. And I took like a screenshot and I sent that to him. I'm like, is this who we're seeing? So excited. <laughs> he's like, you're an idiot. Um, what was I talking about? I don't remember. But it was lovely. It was all lovely. No, then we got to backtrack. of that because I was in LA and I was bored and all we were doing was going out to eat and eating tasting menus, five course tasting menus and um, I really wanted to do something in regards to that, like a side project, something to do with writing and he told me to just start writing it and I said, well I don't know what format I want, I don't know what to say and like he said, just, just write how you talk, just write how you talk and don't think about it and don't let anybody tell you how to write and then just click publish. <laughs> no, it's not, it, it is a really nice and formal, like, like I said, because I've been looking for new food things, I was like, oh, well, let me see what you've got in the vlog. Yeah, I want it to be informal, and I, I just, I want it to be honest, and, and it's fun. It's fun for me. What's it's, the, like, the website or whatever for the food vlog? If, if it's happy People seem interested in your, your, your happy palette. Happyopu.net, so that's H-A-P-P-Y-O-P-U.net, and a happy opu, I grew up in Maui, I spent a lot of time there when I was a kid, um, and a happy opu is a nice way of referring to someone's expanding midsection. <laughs> opu is tummy. That's a great name. Um, you guys have some questions? You think we want to form a line right here? And right here, oh, man. and we'll go back and forth. I can't wait for this. Right. <laughs> You're gonna be on the spot, lady. Hello, my love. Hi. 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 Okay, I have like two questions. Fair. Uh, we're limiting it to one. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. You can, you can do it. Okay. She just gave you up. <laughs> <laughs> I so felt the... scolded. <laughs> If Joss Whedon ever called you up and said, hey, I got to go ahead to restart Firefly just to continue it, would you say, heck yes, I'm doing this, or would you say, uh, I'm busy? <laughs> <laughs> no in between. Let me check my schedule. I don't think anybody would ever say, no, I'm busy to Joss Whedon. <laughs> I, I am, I'm doing it. Um, at this convention last weekend in London, um, speaking of never saying no to Joss, uh, I was there with Sean Marr. And uh, we were having a, a good time, as we usually do. And uh, I got this message as soon as I got my wireless hooked up uh, from Joss. And he said, I'm, I'm in town and I think I'm really close to your hotel, but I don't want anybody to know. And um, would you be able to steal away from the convention and sneak off and meet me for a drink? I said, okay, sure. 
So we went back to our, our hotel that evening after the convention was done, and there was this big disco going on at the convention. They, they do this every night at these Star Fury events. They're themed disco parties. They're super fun. Um, we were going to stay for the disco, but we decided to go meet Joss for this secret drink. And, uh, you know, one tequila, two tequila, three tequila, four. <laughs> four. <laughs> and Joss decides he wants to go dancing. <laughs> and we're, we're at Heathrow Airport. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Heathrow Airport, but there's nothing there. There is no, there's like one pub. It's a good pub, actually, but that's another side story. Um, so, Joss was like, I want to go dancing. And we were like, dancing? Where do you go dancing in Heathrow? And I was like, the only place I'm going to go dancing is the convention. And Joss was like, well, we could probably do that. Like, he's like, do you think that's crazy? And I was like, this could be a huge mistake. This could be a colossal mistake, or totally awesome. So I had my friend Jen with me, who's as stupid as I am, and she was like, I know, let's put you in a disguise. <laughs> Tequila. We're making up crazy things. So we wrap Joss's head in her scarf. It's worked for like 60 years. Bless him. Bless him. So we went. We went to this disco. We show up. Joss looks like Joss Whedon with a scarf on his head. And we waltz into this place, into this disco. And you can see the crowd start to buzz. It was moving through the crowd like a wave. And all of a sudden, there were us and 500 of the best nerds in the world having a full-on dance party. Like a dance circle of us just going off until three in the morning. It was the best night and they were so respectful. That's the thing about brown coats, you know. They're crazy respectful and classy and they let him have the greatest time and didn't bug him and afterwards he stayed of course because he's Joss and took pictures with people at three in the morning and then we went and had McDonald's but that's a whole other thing. How long did the scarf stay on? I mean, did, did eventually he was like, ah, screw it. Yeah, because we walked in and you know, we walked up to the bar and he looks like a total idiot and all these people are looking over and they're like, oh my god, he's like, this is stupid. And I was like, that's pretty stupid. So he just kind of whipped off the, the scarf and that was it. And everyone was like, it's Joss Whedon. He was like, hello everybody. Can you put on some Beyonce, please? That's what he requested. He wanted, he wanted something. I'm, for whatever reason, I'm picturing Derek Zoolander in all black coal. Surprise! It's Joss Whedon! It Joss Whedon's here! Everyone way. was just like... And then, like, a couple girls started crying. So they were, like, dance crying. It was the best. It was the best. It worked out so well. I like the dance crying. Yeah, what was, what was your second question? No, she had a second question. Well, you sort of answered my second one, but do you have any, like, funny stories from, like, when you were... <laughs> Let me tell you, you stick around long enough in this Q&A, they all come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Don't you worry about it. Thank you. I better hurry up with the answer. Okay, so uh, first thing, if you like burgers, the brunch box downtown, Ninth Avenue, best burger I've ever had. I think I've heard of the brunch box, actually. So okay. Good. okay, okay, okay. Okay, but my second question is, is, you've done a lot of these comic book conventions. What is the one question that you are sick to death of answering? <laughs> and don't give us the answer, just the question. Does anybody follow me on Twitter? Yes. So you know. <laughs> so, is Firefly gonna have a season two? Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. Hi there. You're awesome to see in person. Oh, thanks. It's okay to be awesome. Thank you. Hopefully I have two short questions. Sure. From Shindig changed how I feel about strawberries forever. Do, do you really like them? Not 
Not as much as I like cheeseburgers. <laughs>
I, I only did the one, and it was with Sean Mar, and he was a superhero of sorts. Um, and it was comedy gold because he was in a skin tight, full length purple jumpsuit <laughs> made out of spandex. And when he came out of his trailer in that outfit, I laughed until I cried. It was amazing. It was amazing. Sean is a very classy gentleman, too. He's just one of these people that, you know, he'll be in some beautiful cashmere sweater. I'm like, I love your sweater, Sean. He's like, thanks, it's Armani. And I'm like, he's just like, he's, he, he's just very, you know, debonair. So to see him in this get up, I was just dying. I was dying. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So, first of all, I really love Firefly. Um, you're my favorite character in that show. But um, I'm a huge fan of Supernatural. And uh, you did an episode that I absolutely loved, and I was super mad when they killed you off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was wondering um, what it was like to work with Jensen and Jared and all uh, Well, you know. You could bring her back. It's Supernatural. They could I have a tough job. I have a tough job, guys. Um, I just wish they were better looking. <laughs> about those two. Um, Jensen directed that episode. And he, I mean, a lot of the time, you know, you go on a show and one of the stars is like, I'm directing this year. You're like, oh, God. Because, you know, we're actors. A lot of us don't know what we're doing when it comes to directing. Um, but not only did he know what he was doing, he was crazy calm. Um, he always is anyway. Jensen's just one of these people that's just chilled out. Um, but he was so calm and stress-free on set, and I had to hop a plane. We were shooting all night, and then I was gonna hop a, a 6 a.m. plane to Toronto to shoot my other show. And I was dreading it, you know, because I knew I wasn't gonna get any sleep. And he was such a doll, he made sure that all my stuff was finished by just before midnight, so I could at least have like five hours sleep to get on my plane. Who does that? Who does that? They were lovely. They were both so great, and you know, Jared is a clown, and he just makes me laugh. And it was awesome. It was awesome. And they're very tall, strapping gentlemen. I don't know if you've ever seen them in person, but I mean, it's like, it's crazy. Like, they're two aliens, you know, <laughs> from the planet Gorgeous. <laughs> Cindy, she, uh, she's an actress, Cindy Busby, I don't know if you guys watch Heartland, she was on Heartland for years. Um, Cindy's a riot, and she came with me for my wardrobe fitting for Supernatural, and um, Jensen came down to say hello, because I hadn't seen him in a while, and Cindy's obsessed with him. And he walked in the room, and Cindy's usually a very, you know, she's gregarious and outgoing, and very funny and sharp, and she just lost it. Like, she had, I don't know what happened to her, but... <laughs> This was a couple years ago, and I still make fun of her for it. Her voice changed when she met him. Like, he was like, I was like, this is my friend Cindy. And he was like, oh, hi, Cindy. I'm Jensen. It's nice to meet you. And she said, hello. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and she was just like, like, as soon as it came out of my mouth, she was like, oh my god, I've blown it. I've blown it. <laughs> Was a couple weeks later, she booked her own guest star on Supernatural and ended up having to, to go on set and actually work with him after this, you know. It's the best. We still do it every once in a while. I told everybody we know, of course. Every once in a while, I'll just look at Cindy and go, hello. <laughs> I guess he does that to people. Hi, Hello. Oh my god. Poor girl. Howdy. Hi. You having a fight with that microphone? Yeah. Um, if you would have got up to the microphone and said, hello, hello, you know, you would have got a huge laugh. Oh, I didn't want to get yeah. in front of everybody. That's okay. That's the wrong impression. Right. Anyways, first off, I want to say huge fan. You play a great multifaceted character. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to ask if a great script for like a musical version of Firefly came up. <laughs> well, wait a second. This is a variation of the question she doesn't want to answer anymore. We're talking about stage. Like, is there any possibility that the rights to that could be moved around for somebody to do that? I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. Like I said, you know, I'm just an actor. Um, they don't. We don't know anything about rights. All we know is that they're incredibly complicated. 
Um, but anything Firefly would be fun to relive just once more, you know? I think we all feel that way. Thank you. No. Well, I, I signed a five-year contract, so I was pretty sure I was going to win. <laughs> <laughs> the coolest thing about that was um, they gave me this very fancy prosthetic to wear um, that had the bullet hole in it, and I had to wear it all day because we were shooting that scene all day. So we went into the commiss commissary on the Fox lot for lunch, and there I was with my like big bullet hole and my blood coming out of my prosthetic, ordering a sandwich. So that was, that was cool. <laughs> probably say the message, which is funny because that was our last, but I think because it was our last, we really soaked it up and appreciated the moment a lot more. Um, and it was bittersweet, but that's the one that sticks out the most for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my god, I love your t-shirt so much, dude. That t-shirt is amazing. It says, trek yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> so I have two questions. Number one, uh, when I first saw Firefly, I was, uh, I thought, hey, it's that girl from Flash Forward. <laughs> Which was an amazing show that I really liked. Um, and uh, he mentioned that you were also in Are You Afraid of the Dark? And another one that I really liked was uh, growing up was uh, you can't do that on television. Um, all Canadian shows I found out later. Um, pretty much my entire childhood was produced by Canada. <laughs> uh, and I'm curious why that is. Like, did they just have, you know, better, more funding for that, or better, I don't know. It's, was Hey Dude Canadian too? I'm not sure, but <laughs> that was like that, that, that trio of yeah. teen soaps. It was all on Nickelodeon while yeah. Flash Road was I, Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know why that is, but you're kind of right, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys get the polka dot door down here? No, that was pure Canada. <laughs> that was a weird one. That was really weird. It was about, um, I don't even know what it was about. It was about this, the, these friends that lived in a house and every once in a while this like monster named the Pokeroo would come and visit but like the guy would always miss him like he'd be like darn it I missed him again but like he was obviously the Pokeroo like the same thing happened in every episode Canadians are crazy crazy and then my other question something else I've noticed that I've been curious about why are Canadian girls so hot? <laughs> because they're imported <laughs> Tell my friends you said that. I like that. Hello. Hello. Um, so the foodie side of me and the firefly side of me have been battling it out as to what question I want to ask you, but ball, ball. <laughs> Combine them, it'll be interesting. <laughs> um, On the episode of Hamburger, which was your favorite scene with the milkshake? I mean bizarre yet delicious thing you have ever eaten. Focus on the bizarre. Bizarre yet delicious. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think bizarre. Bizarre. I've had a lot of weird things. Or even if it wasn't delicious, just the weirdest thing you've ever eaten. Um, <laughs> well, I, I shot a movie in New Orleans, or in Baton Rouge, actually, um, for a little bit, and I had alligator, and it was an 
alligator schnitzel. <laughs> yeah, so they breaded it and fried it and made it look like a schnitzel. It wasn't half bad. It really wasn't. I think, well, one of the most bizarre for me anyway, but one of the most beautiful things I'd ever had was this, um, this dish at a restaurant in LA called Providence. And um, it's a, a, an egg shell, it's a hollowed out egg. And they've taken the egg and they've mixed it with sea urchin. And I never was a fan of sea urchin. They put it back in the shell and they sprinkle little bits of caviar over it and it's warm and creamy and the most delicious thing ever, ever. I ate my friends, I ate mine, I wanted more. I still, I still think about it. I love that. I love when somebody makes something special and it's a food that you always convince yourself you hated and then it turns out you just really love it. I, I love that. I love that part of food. Me too. Thank what you. Was, what was your other question? You can ask it. Everybody else has been doing two anyway. <laughs> um, well, just your friendship with Sean, did that develop while you guys were filming, or was it kind of afterwards you're like, hey, I really miss working with you, and you guys kind of became friends that Pretty way? much. I mean, we, we all became very close shooting the show. Um, Marina and I were very, very close. She was actually the maid of honor at my wedding. That never worked out. But hey, it's not Marina's fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, Nathan is still a really close friend of mine. Sean is just one of these people. I don't know, we have the same sense of humor. We just get each other. You know that friend you have where no matter how much time has passed, you meet up with them and you pick up right where you left off. And all the same jokes are funny. Um, he's like that. He's like that for me. And when I was living in LA, my house was literally around the corner from his. So I would see him a lot. And we went to Pilates together. <laughs> we would go to Pilates, convince ourselves we had a great workout, and then we would go and have brunch for three hours. <laughs> no more Pilates. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're like, why are we getting in shape? This is so weird. Why stay shiny? He has a Keep Calm shirt, but it says Keep Calm and Stay Shiny. I've seen those, those are fabulous. Keep Calm and Stay Shiny. Oh! Oh! Okay, I get it now! I just think you have the shirt! Look at the shirt! It's a little hard to get! Security? Alright, now I get it. Okay, so now we're gonna move on. Yeah, so now we're moving on. I want to say thank you for coming up here to Portland for us. We, we all appreciate it. We're very glad to have you here. I'm going to ask two questions since it seems to be the, the motif. Uh, first question I talked to Marina back in February at Comic Con and asked her what her favorite thing from the set that she got to take home was. I was wondering what yours was. I got to take home a few things. I got to take home my um, Kaylee's room door sign. And uh, that always gets into awe. <laughs> and uh, the hammock from the engine room. That always gets into <laughs> Um, I think that's it, you know. Everything else Nathan took with him. <laughs> yeah, he did. He loves Firefly. He really loves Firefly, a lot of it. I always thought his house must be, like, you walk in and you're just tripping over Firefly stuff. You're like, oh, oh no, yeah. so he wants and he gave a bunch of stuff to Nathan that was Firefly related. So it's I don't know where he's, I don't know what he's doing with all of it. I don't know where it is in the house. I don't know what he's doing with it. It worries me. <laughs> So my other question, uh, it's, it's a Joss Whedon question, go figure. Uh, so he's got a new show on TV, started this, this fall, wondering if maybe you're talking to him about maybe being on the show? The weird thing when you have these friends, these successful friends, I just, I always feel weird about talking about work. I auditioned for his show, but I didn't tell him I auditioned for it. So he may never have seen my audition. Um, it, you know, goes through casting first. They decide who they would like to present to the creators of the show. I've always felt weird about it, and I know that's probably stupid of me, and I should really be, you know, more proactive that way, but I just, I really want Joss to know that I'm friends with Joss because I like Joss. You know what I mean? Like, more than anything else, I like spending time with him. Um, work is work, but friends are more important to me. So, yeah. Very good.
talking about all of these movie actors going to TV now. He said, it's crazy. Everybody's, everybody's going to TV. You know, Kevin Spacey, uh, Dustin Hoffman has a show on TV, you know, Carrot Top. And we're like, yeah, yeah. That's the important one. And then he looked at What's me. Carrot Top? Game, yeah, right? and he looked at us and he was like, Carrot Top? He's like, it's a joke, guys. It's a joke. <laughs> You can't take anything he says seriously. I love him for it. So with the supernatural, though, I mean, I know you talked about Jensen, and um, in the outtakes, Jared, like you were talking about earlier with someone with gas, like there are all these outtakes with that. Did you experience that? He never farted around me. Good. No, he didn't. He well, I w he was sort of a gentleman. He was hilarious. He's one of these guys that like he just. I think. He doesn't take it seriously. No. He's so fun. Which I love. I love. When you work with an actor that takes everything seriously, it's so boring. 
It just really is. It's like, buddy, come on. We're playing make-believe. Relax. Um, well, it's funny because he plays such a serious character. So I guess he does. Yeah. I think it's really cool that in real life he's just a jokester. He's a total jokester. Anything he can do to make you laugh, he will do. He will pull out all the stops. And I, I'm very, I laugh very easily. Like, I ruin takes often because I can't not laugh. Um, there's this blooper reel, I don't know, if you guys have heard about it going around on YouTube of the LA Complex, and one of the producers sent it to me and was like, you might want to watch this blooper reel, and I was like, oh yay, and he's like, no, 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 it's 10 minutes long and it's you for nine minutes. <laughs> and it's literally me just ruining the tape, the tape, the tape. Oh, I'm gonna have to check that out, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, uh, you were saying you were from Maui area, and you love food, so have you had a loco moco? Yes, I have, of course. Excellent. Of course. I also really enjoy poi, and a lot of people don't, but I love it. I don't even know what poi is. I've heard of poi. It's taro root. It's like a mashed taro root. Okay. It's a, it looks like a gray paste, but it tastes kind of citrusy. It's really good with pork. They serve it with, um, like they do like a Kahlua pig roast a lot of the time, and they serve it with that, and it just kind of cuts the a little bit, it's delicious. A lot of people don't like it, but I like it. And who was Practical Joker on Firefly, and what was the best one? Nathan. Oh, Nathan, 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 Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Always Nathan. Um, he had so many going. He had this, this monkey that he was getting people to take pictures with for a while, and like he kidnapped it from somebody, so he was sending ransom notes to get back. Like, it, it was just never ending with that guy. There was always something he was doing. But he's he's like he's like Jared. He'll do anything for a laugh, anything. And I'm an easy mark. So guess who they go after? <laughs> Thank you. Well, you just answered one of my questions, which is whether Nathan Fillion really is insane. <laughs> yes. So I, I want to say first, uh, I think your parents named you very well. Aw, thank you. And uh, I now have a new dream. I want to cook you one of my hamburgers. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Music to my ears. Yeah, mozzarella and Swiss and cheddar and enough spices. Three cheeses, hello. Oh, yeah. And enough spices that Chris can't have one. <laughs> Yeah, don't feed Chris anything. Don't feed the bears. <laughs> oh, he'll just get bigger. Anyway, the two questions. Uh, one, is there any uh, TV show or movie series that you haven't been on that you would like to? Well, I kind of missed my chance with one. I loved Lost a lot. I was a huge Lost fan. Now that that's over, it makes me sad. Um, what else am I watching right now? Have you guys seen Orange is the New Black? <laughs> Oh my god, it's so good. Um, I also love uh, what they did with Star Trek quite a bit. I was never really a Star Trek fan until I saw, you know, J.J. Abrams' remake of the first one. I haven't seen the second one yet, but I really loved it. Um, there's lots of things I love. I'm a huge TV and movie junkie. That's all I really love to do. I, I do a lot of traveling and work and whatnot, but when I'm not doing that, I just love to sit and Binge watch. It's my favorite thing. I went through the first season of Damages recently. Have you guys seen Damages? Oh my god, it's crazy. I was like a crackhead. I sat on my couch for hours, for hours, watching that show. I just needed to know what happened. It's an amazing show if you haven't seen it. Season one, season one, Damages. The other one, I hope I don't embarrass myself by getting one of the names wrong here, but how do you think things would transpire? if uh, Kaylee were to meet Dr. Keller. Ah. <laughs> That's a very interesting scenario. Gosh, I don't know. I think Dr. Keller would be so uncomfortable up there. <laughs> She'd just be like, ew. Um, I'm not sure. I think Kaylee's one of those people that just makes anybody feel pretty good. You know, she's, she's friendly. She's a nice lady. She was even nice to Saffron after all that shit went down. <laughs> she didn't have to be that nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a funny. That's a funny thing. Funny question. Huh? You stumped me, sir. How now, dare you? Since you're stumped, this is a good time here. We have about five minutes left, so there is no way that we are going to be able to get to all these questions. But I had a, I had a novel idea. What if everybody just said one word? 
and you had to follow the next person's word and see if we can form a question. Just, I don't know, I just think it might be fun. <laughs> or we can do something else. I, I just... I'm game for whatever. <laughs> All right. I know we're doing this. Remember, you're only allowed to say one word, and you are beginning the question. So say one word, which will probably be like a what, where, or how, something like that, and then pass it back. <laughs> and let's see what happens. It's gonna be okay. Don't be scared. Well, your research. Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> and someone will begin to it, but I have to say I grew up watching you on Flash Forward as well. Thank so you. Thank I, you. I always enjoyed it, and I think the only reason I agreed to watch Firefly with my husband is because you were in it. Oh, thank you. I just got 100% ignored. <laughs>
full-on panic mode. And I'm sitting on his couch. What? And he's reading this thing, and he's like, and he's like, there's another, there's another thing in here. And it's another envelope. And he opens the envelope, and it's a picture of me going like this. <laughs> Good place to end, you know? George and that. Oh, no, <laughs> Continue. Sir. So anyway, um... So he still has this picture on his mantle, by the way. Uh, which I love. Um, and then, uh, we... We cut to the Serenity rap party, and they show us the blooper reel in front of the whole cast and crew. And we're all saying goodbye, and then all of a sudden, this, this Caleb from Buffy doll, Nathan Fillion doll, pops up into the frame, and it says, For Jewel, and then the doll just goes... <laughs> but I need to win at all things, so we went to Dragon Con. About a year later, uh, me and Nathan, and I think Adam was on stage with this as well, my buddy Peter David, he's a, a writer, um, he knew about this feud, and I asked him to help me um, by spreading the word in the audience before we came on stage, what I needed them to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> we get on stage, and Nathan being Nathan, needs to control the crowd and the questions. He thinks he's the captain in real life. <laughs> and Adam and I don't care, we're just sitting back. Peter's waving his hand in the air for a question. He goes, yes, you, sir, you there. And he goes, Nathan, we salute you. And an audience of 3,000 people <laughs> got up and put them <laughs> And he was like, 